Right, guys, good afternoon and welcome. So, this review will be about Wrong Turn 4. As we continue to lead up to the reboot, I will try and get through each movie in the Wrong Turn series. So, Wrong Turn 4 is our prequel. So this goes back to before Wrong Turn and it shows how things things came to be with the with the Hilliker brothers. The, the movie starts off with a new doctor being shown around a sanitarium. It's a little similar to Silence of the Lambs as Clarice is walking along the cells. It has that that same vibe. And as this new doctor is walking through the cells, you can see that these three inmates who are deranged or inbred have this little device, maybe a Kirby grip, in their in their cell. And as the doctor, the new doctor and the old doctor leave the room, the Hilliker brothers break out of their cell. And as they walk to the end of the cell block, they release everybody else. And then this gives you quite a quite an interesting scene. A lot of people think this is a good scene, a lot of people think it's a really corny scene. I I quite like it. You have all of the inmates, you, you literally have the assignment, the inmates running the asylum. They're running through the hospital, they're torturing the doctors in different gruesome ways, whilst you have music in the background. Do 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 so you have you have this music in the background as the the doctors been are being tortured by the inmates for me it's quite i think it's a good scene some people think it's it's really corny but i think this is quite a quite a good scene now after this scene is finished we then cut to a group of a group of teenagers all bar one are having sex and that does set the tone for the rest of the film. They venture out on a ski trip to meet some guy called Porter and they get they get lost along the way as they're driving on their their snowmobiles. And they're in a position where they're in the middle of nowhere. It's it's freezing. They're horribly horribly lost, so they're facing either they have to get shelter or they're facing certain death. So they see this they see this big building and they go straight towards it. And when they get inside they see that this is a a sanatorium. And they they get in and they start to explore. And this is where they, they meet the Hilliker brothers. Now, as for the positives, I like the idea of a prequel. I think maybe the prequel should have been last in the series. This one's sandwiched in this one is sandwiched in the middle, but I do like the the idea of a prequel. The the previous wrong turn number three gave us something different, it gave us convicts. Uh, this one has returned to the uh, Teen Beat cast, but at least we have a different location. I think had you had another movie set in the ve the West Virginia Woods in the summer. You're heading toward you are heading towards overkill. So definitely credit for at least giving us a different season. And I think if you I think if you enjoy you enjoy Carnage Candy, I think if you enjoy a lot of sex in your horror movies, then yeah, wrong turn four will be will be good for you. The the negatives in this film, one is the exposition. You would be you would be surprised about how much knowledge this group of teens have about the sanitarium. Each of the cast seems to know a little something about the sanitarium and it's a little on the nose but it's not, it's definitely not a deal breaker. Uh, one negative and this number four isn't the only one of the wrong turn series to have this negative is the bad acting and the poor characters. Now you have number one which I think the original Wrong Turn, whilst it may not be a horror classic, it was a good idea. It did have some likeable characters. Number two, 
Number two, you had very cliched characters, quite poorly written characters, but you had Henry Rollins acting the hell out of his role, and he, you know, he dragged the movie along by itself. Number three was a good concept. I think the idea of having inmates against the hillbillies was a good idea. It just, it wasn't pulled off. The inmates, the, their characters were poorly written, and it was just a lot of walking around, and the concept was good but it just wasn't pulled off and this one this, I didn't like any of the I didn't really like any of the characters none of them stood out and I wasn't really rooting for any of them to survive in fact, probably the opposite now another negative is poor decisions now in a horror movie you have characters who are under stress and when we're in stressful decisions we don't think the way we'd normally and sometimes we make create like bad decisions for example running upstairs instead of out the door a lot of the decisions they made in this film weren't when they, were, they weren't stress a stressful circumstance and it looked like they made this decision just to pad the runtime a little bit more for example when they trapped the three Hilliker brothers in the cell again now bear in mind these guys have already escaped now Kyle was holding up the lighter he could have set the cell on fire, you kill the Hilliker brothers, you don't have a wrong turn, you don't have a problem, the movie's over, but his friend, I think Delia, I can't remember the name, she lectured him on the morality of why it's wrong to kill, Kyle didn't kill them and they then escaped and the carnage candy started. So that was a, it was a bad decision made when they were under zero stress, the Hilliker brothers were locked away, they had the opportunity to kill them, and they could sit in. They could sit and they could stay at the sanatorium until the weather got better and be on their merry way. So this was a classic example of a decision that was made just so the movie could keep on going. And you also have to deal with the one-liners, like cooking like a fucked up fondue. Uh, but, oh boy. So yeah, wrong, wrong turn for. I think like with a lot of movie, horror movies and slashers, if you can, if you're not in it for the acting, you're not in it for, for character development, you don't have to be attached to the characters and you like a little bit of sex and you like a lot of car uh, gore, then this movie will will work for you. I, no, for me it's, it's watchable, it's not a movie that I will return to very often, probably along with the third one. The third one annoyed me because it did have some potential, but it just wasn't pulled off. So I don't think this is wrong term four is one that I would return to very often. But it's I think it's definitely one that you should watch. It gives you at least it shows you how wrong term one came came about. So I will look to try and review the next. I think it's two more wrong turns in the se the series before the the reboot comes out. I'm not sure what to expect from the reboot yet. The f I did, you know, I did enjoy the first wrong turn, and that's one that I probably will, I will return to again, and I will probably watch, rewatch Wrong Turn One again before the reboot comes out. So it's, like, it's only been a short review today, guys. But thank you very much for listening, and I'll be back on in a few days to talk about Wrong Turn Five. So thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.